So how do you position yourself to engage with that brain, that left brain, right brain, rational, emotional creature that you're trying to engage with? And this is something that we use as we think, talk about, or we, we work with brands in, in my organization. And it starts with a belief that was borrowed from a guy named Albert Einstein, who once said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. And I think his point here, I never get the chance to talk to him, is that it's all about complexity, right? We are, we are, we are inundated with information, we're inundated with choice, we're, we're, we, you know, our little brains, like a little gerbil in a cage, running around, running around, trying to process it all. And the task is to simplify down to the, to the most, the simplest place we can, but not oversimplify, because if you'll oversimplify, you lose the integrity of the proposition. But oftentimes the simplicity isn't, up, isn't, isn't compelling. And so how do you take that simple idea and deliver it in the interview, pre-interview, post-interview, in a way that is most engaging and motivates the market to want to buy you? And so the phrase we use is, it's all about finding a brand's one simple thing. So I do a lot of brand workshops, and one of the uh, things I have done, I don't always do it, but I start, it's usually a group of people, eight to 15 people, most of whom have never met me, and they're sitting around the table, and I get to this point in the thing, and I say, so, everybody take out a piece of paper and write down what you think of me. And everybody writes down what they think of me. And they usually write down one or two words. Because that is what we do. That is how we manage the, all the information that is coming at us. We put it in simple little buckets. I'll give you an example. Oh wait, actually, I will get to an example. So, strongest brands own a one simple thing. Once you own it, very hard for the market to take it away from you. And here's the point. If you don't create a one simple thing, the market will create one for you. So here's the truth. People come in, they interview with me, they spend an hour with me, blah, 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 talk about that, blah, 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 and they leave. And I have one or two attributes I attach to them. Maybe smart, maybe boring, maybe adventuresome, maybe courageous, maybe crazy, maybe whatever. There's one or two attributes I attach. I don't attach a paragraph. I don't have the mental fortitude to attach a paragraph to each of them. And then at the end of the day, I've interviewed five different candidates for a job. I assess those candidates pretty much against those singular attributes. And so here's your qu the question. Do you want me to assign the attribute to you? Or do you want to have me in understand the attribute that you want assigned to you? And clearly, I think, the latter is better than the former. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, some examples of one simple thing. So what is Volvo, you know, after 30 years of spending gazillions of dollars on advertising, what's their one simple thing? Right? Probably? Maybe? Yeah? What is FedEx's? Uh, you know, what is, I, I'm an iPod junkie, what's iPod? Like, what is, the, what is the association you have with the iPod? And for me, anyway, it's about, it's just, it's, it's my, and I underscore my music. And then it works at a people level, too. You know, um, Barack Obama, when he ran for election, uh, sp spent $350 million dollars paid media to market his brand, right? And at the end of the day, 99.9% .9 of the consumers walking into the voting booth, when you ask them, excuse me, sir, you know, what does Barack Obama mean to you? 99% of those people had one word. They didn't have a policy statement. They didn't have, you know, anything other than that. They had like one word. So, it also, you know, here's my view of Bruce Springsteen, if you know Springsteen. Like, what's his one simple thing? My, I, this could be right or it could be wrong, I don't know. But, you know, in my head, this is what he represents to me, right? Does this make sense? Yes. All right. Um, so, here's another way to think about it. You're at a cocktail party or a barbecue. And you see a person that you really want to talk to. You see Scott Griffiths, who's the CEO of Zipcar, because everybody wants to work for Zipcar. So you suck up the courage, and you walk up to Scott, and you start talking. Right? This is pretty much what happened. And this is what Scott does. Right? 
I mean, Scott's just shutting, I mean, he's talking to you, but he's really shutting down, and he's sitting there going, or standing there going, how do I, how do I exit this conversation gracefully? How do, you know, even if you're a lovely person, he's, he's trying to get out of it. He's thinking about the hors d'oeuvre trade, he's thinking about how he gets another, whatever. He's trying to get out of it. And so the, the power of a one simple thing effectively delivered is that it serves as a wedge to break through his, his barriers, to, to give him a message that is so relevant and so motivating and so distinct and so singular that he actually engages with you, that he actually wants, he wants to talk to you and he wants to learn the rest of your story, okay? But what most people do is they fire hose. Well, A, they're ill-prepared. I'm gonna get to that in a second. B, they fire hose. And, and you see this not just with human beings looking for a job, you see it with corporations selling things to other corporations or other human beings. Like, Nicholas, I'm just gonna tell you absolutely everything about me, features, benefits, past, present, future, and I'm gonna hope that something in that fire hose of crap will resonate with you and that will cause you to you know, engage with me or buy me. But the problem with that is it's not the way it works. When I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And no matter whether one of those little streams of water is relevant, if I'm drowning, I'm still drowning. And so the, you know, the, the, the question is, how do, you, how do you figure out which of those little streams is the most salient, relevant, motivating, distinct stream of your story? And you lead with that, and you constantly refer to that, and you close with that, and you follow up with that, because that's the label that you you want, that's the label that you believe is most relevant and motivating and distinct about you. Make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna, so there's like six basic, I don't know, steps or tenets of how to market yourself and how to, how to, how to establish the brand of you. And the first one is find your one simple thing. So I actually, uh, I, uh, I taught this at, uh, oddly enough, I, I teach a marketing class at Tufts, but I always add on this presentation because all the kids in the class want to find a job, so they asked me to do this presentation. So uh, I, I actually taught this last week, taught's probably too strong a word, I shared this last week, and um, one of the students said, uh, is it possible you could have multiple one simple things? And I think the answer is yes. You know, people are multifaceted creatures. And I'm a, I'm a hybrid freako person that has sort of left brain and right brain capacity. And if I'm, if I'm approaching a creative oriented company, an agency or a marketing firm, whatever, maybe my one simple thing is about my creative intensity or my desire, my insatiable curiosity or whatever. Um, but maybe if I'm approaching a financial service company and I want to parlay the analytical ability I have, Maybe it's, maybe it's something a little different. The point is it's not absolute, but the point is get to the point, right? Make sense? 